this is Uh, can open source open minds uh, lessons learned making games about diversity for the Includo project? My name's Jesse. Um, and before I begin, uh, I'd like to apologize. Uh, this is not a tech talk, so if you're expecting a tech talk, I'm sorry. <laughs> thank you. So there's some supporters too. Um, anyway, so but I, I am going to tell you about stuff that I find really fascinating. Uh, stuff that I've been learning when I've been making uh, games about diversity, and I hope that um, you find it interesting too. Okay, so. Um, um, like I was saying, uh, my name is Jesse. I work at the Cree Game Lab. So the Cree's um, Center for Re uh, Research and Interdisciplinarity. Interdisciplinarity. Sorry, it's hard to say. In Paris, um, and at the Game Lab, we make um, open games for science, social change, um, and uh, and for education. So we create games. Uh, we usually we team up with researchers and teachers, and we create games with them. We uh, teach we teach uh, we teach game design, and in particular, we have a really cool summer school that we call Glass, where we mix uh, science students and game design students over the summer in order to have them make science games together. So we've been running that for a few years; it's pretty fun. Um, and finally, uh, we have we do some community events. So we have uh, this club called the Game Media uh, that Pedro was talking about earlier, where people come and they give talks about game design. Uh, about educational games and all sorts of stuff related to that. Most of the talks are online on YouTube. Um, some are in French, some are in English. Uh, it should be pretty clear when you find them. So if you're interested, don't, don't, um, don't hesitate to check out that uh, YouTube channel. All right. So this project began when these two guys, uh, these two brothers, Hilmi and Subi, who, work for, who started a small um, startup uh, in social entrepreneurship in India, uh, approached the Cree and said, that they wanted to make games with us that promote diversity and uh, inclusion in the workplace in India. So, you know, I said, hey, that's a great idea. <laughs> you know, I mean, I don't know anything about diversity or inclusion, and I've never been to India. But, you know, let's do it, right? How hard, how hard could it possibly be? Um, and so it turns out that uh, diversity is very dangerous, okay? And this is true. Uh, studies show that it can cause discomfort, uh, create rougher interactions, uh, create a lack of trust. Uh, greater perceived interpersonal conflict, lower communication, have less cohesion in a group, uh, and more concern about being disrespected. So why are we trying to do games about diversity again? What's, what's the point? Well, it turns out that diversity is also very advantageous for organizations. Obviously, it also is advantageous for a society as a whole, but I won't even argue that point. Just for um, organizations to be diverse actually brings them a great advantage. Um, and there's all sorts of studies that have shown this. It's really interesting. There's stuff that uh, diversity brings. So the most obvious thing is that, OK, you're a diverse group. You have di people of different viewpoints that come, right? That makes sense. But what's really interesting is that the dynamics of the group changes when you have um, change when you have uh, people from different backgrounds. So people actually share information better than they would. Uh, perhaps because uh, if you're with someone who you think is very similar to you, you might not think that you really have to talk about something because it's obvious they already know it. Right? Uh, but if you, if you don't trust that they really know what you're talking about, then you're going to put it out. And if you think that somebody has a different viewpoint than you, you actually do a better job arguing your viewpoint, which means you do more research, you back up your thinking, you think about what you're going to say before you say it. Whereas if you're with people who you, know, you generally all agree, you don't do that. You just get lazy and you just say what you want to say. You know? um, and in, on the flip side of that, too, uh, people with um, differing opinions or dissenting opinions are actually more likely to bring them up in a group that's diverse. Um, so once again, if you're in a group that with everyone else that's pretty much like you, uh, you, you generally try to stick with that like, like you part. And you won't bring up the, oh, this might not work you know, kind of uh, viewpoint, which can be very important. All right. Um, uh, it is shown in the corporate world to lead for better performance. Companies make more money um, uh, when they have, in, in particular, it's been studied with uh, having females on corporate boards, for example. Um, and in the scientific world, it turns out that scientific papers uh, written by groups of authors that are diverse are cited more and have higher impact factors, which is another kind of cool, cool element. Um, and there's a third reason I think that probably big companies have started to care about this, which is to avoid really bad PR. Um, I don't know who remembers this thing with Google Photos when it rolled out, uh, was it two years ago? And it was misidentifying people as gorillas. Um, 
And you know, obviously, right, no one thinks like Google's out to do that, right? That's not their that's not what they're trying to do, but it does indicate, well, how come they didn't pick that up, right? And we don't really know, but we can suspect that the reason they didn't notice it before it rolled out is maybe the people testing and doing the QA were not of that background, didn't have that skin color, weren't from that part of the world. Uh, and maybe there's a reason that they also to have diversity. Okay. So um, okay, so diversity is so good. Let's do it. What's, what's the problem, right? And in fact, I think pe most people would agree with that point. Most people would agree with that point. In the current political climate, maybe not everyone <laughs> would agree with that point. But I think a lot of people would, would think, well, you know, we've moved on, right? Like, we know diversity is good. We know people are different than us. It doesn't mean that they're inferior. So, you know, OK, that's good. Uh, the problem is that um, that's not actually, even if we think that way, that's not the way we're really uh, thinking. Because it turns out that, uh, as, this, as the quote goes, we are not feeling beings who think, oh, no, sorry, we are feeling beings who think, not thinking beings who feel. Um, which means primarily we are driven by emotions, and our thinking can be all kind of wacky afterwards. And uh, in fact, even the fact that we're, we make decisions and our reasons behind the decisions may largely be um, thought up after the fact. Uh, that's been studied too. So. People will tend to make decisions, and then you justify why you said that, right? So you make decision first, you know, explain later. Um, so that obviously doesn't lead to making really good decisions where you're taking in uh, all the information. Um, and in fact, there's, there are researchers who suggest that the, our ability to reason did not come from, uh, is not motivated to make really good decisions, but rather to convince other people to join us is what we want to do, which is really crazy, which means that basically, yeah, once again, we're making a decision, then we're justifying it, and then we're going to explain it really well so that we, other people can uh, agree with us. So that's kind of scary. Um, and in particular, it leads to all sorts of bias. So the, um, there's different kinds of bias. Probably the main one that we talk about is called confirmation bias. Um, so that's what they talk about a lot nowadays involving the news. Um, it means that when you get new information and it agrees with what you've already thought, then you tend to uh, accept it as true. If you get information that um, goes against what you already thought, you tend to disregard it. And if people confront you with information that goes against what you think, often, rather than changing your mind, you will probably double down on what you believe and think that there's some kind of like plot to try to get you to change your mind. Um, and in terms of stereotypes, this comes down to people, right? So, you know, categorizing people based on what? Their skin, their age, how tall they are, how pretty they are, whatever kind of thing, and make some kind of judgment about the way they're going to act. Um, and in fact, this is, well, interesting little side note, it's even been studied that uh, when we see people who we consider very inferior to ourselves, we actually, the part of our brains that light up is not the part having to do with people, but rather the part having to do with objects which means we are capable of literally seeing people as objects no, no, in a... No. Yes, it's true. No, 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 I just disagree. I'm, I'm a, a really? public statement. Uh, you cannot make such a, a straightforward assumption. I find well, this is ba well, I'm based on this paper is what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, but I don't care about whatever paper. Parts of brains are not significant in the way we see people. I'm I don't sorry. Know. Okay. I don't know. I, that, that's, what I, that's what I've understood so far. Now, obviously, the two things can go hand in hand. You can have bias against, stereo, against groups of people. Okay. So um, it actually makes sense why we act this way, right? Our brains have evolved for a certain reason. Most, we don't know for sure, but most, most likely it's because we need to make decisions quickly, especially in a more kind of wild situation where there's predators, there's different groups of people. Maybe there were, were reasons to be scared of other groups of people, and it made sense to try to run away or something like that. OK. Um, so get back to the workplace. Uh, in the workplace, obviously, if you want a diverse workplace, well, you have to hire diverse people. Okay, and um, some of the interesting studies they've done have involved sending out CVs. So someone will render, they'll put out resumes that are exactly identical, except for the name on the top. So in this particular study, um, there was, uh, they had one, one person was named, one fake resume was for John, and one fake resume was for Jennifer. They sent these out at uh, university laboratories to be hired by faculty members, right? Um, and in this case, the, uh, it turns out that Jennifer, oh, 10 minutes, okay. <laughs> Jennifer would be, was judged uh, less competent, uh, would not be as hired as often, and if they were hired, wouldn't be paid as much. Um, so that's kind, of, that's kind of scary too. Okay, and if you think that hiring based on CVs is bad, well, it turns out that 
interviews are much worse. In fact, um, some people suggest that interviews are probably the worst way to hire people because it's when you have the most bias. Because you're communicating with them, you come down, you talk about stuff that you enjoy in common, and you're not judging them based on what they, what they need to be doing. OK, uh, just a quick side note, a uh, really interesting e example they've done is for orchestras. So it used to be in the US, there were very few females in orchestras. I think it said 1970, it was less than 5%. Um, and the way they got around this is doing these blind, uh, these blind, uh, uh, what's it called when you're getting hired? I can't think of the name. Blind, blind, blind um, recitals. So people would come, they put up a curtain, and they play behind the curtain. Uh, and it actually, at some point, uh, in some orchestras, they made people um, take off their shoes because there was a thing could, people could hear when it was a woman walking and when it was a man walking. It's just, it's crazy. Okay, so um, let's go on to games. Um, so when we started this project, making games to promote diversity, uh, we started with the assumption that most of ideas were not going to be very good and that we needed to. Um, so the, our conclusion when, is that we need to try a lot. So basically, we structured our project so that we started with prototypes, a bunch, then we cut them down uh, to just four. That's what we're doing now. And we're going to be developing them for the next year and then putting them out there. Uh, all our projects, well, it's open source. Otherwise, it wouldn't be here. Uh, we also do, we're going to put out all our data as open data, so all the analytics we get back. Um, and the process itself is open. We're trying to put, put it all on our blog so people can reproduce our ideas, try different things that we didn't do, et cetera. OK, um, so we started with game jams and with working with, with, pe with the organizations that we're going to be at. Um, and this was, I was going to go through all, all the uh, different ideas that we tried, but I'm not going to have time. So we tried abstract platformers, online comic captions, uh, five minute debates <laughs> about celebrities, uh, automatic stereotype generators, a whole lot of different stuff. Um, and we put all these things out there. Uh, we had uh, our, peop our testers in India try them and rank them based on how engaging they thought they were and how much they learned. Um, and based on that, we picked these four games. Um, uh, so one of them is, uh, let's see, so Hired is a game where you, um, we, kind of, we kind of teach about bias. So we give people biases, and you have to hire someone. And so you, you pick up cards, and everyone's trying to hide their bias, because if someone else finds out, they're out of the game. And so they, you, you come up with these really funny arguments where you're kind of trying not to say why you don't want to hire women. Because you're, so you have to come up with funny things. It works out pretty well. Um, Pin My State is a game for about learning about different regions of India. Uh, it's too hard for me, but for people who live there, they can, they can play it. Um, this is kind of a weird physical game where you pretend to be pirates that all have different physical handicaps, and you have to play a cooperative game. Uh, and another day is a visual novel that we're creating now about you being an HR manager at a. Oh, sorry, I lost the microphone. One second. All right, so uh, we don't have a lot of time, but I just wanted to say a few things that we learned with this process so far. So, one thing is that we've learned to. Uh, favor concrete ideas over abstract ones. Once again, based on the assumption that the, the abstract things, people might agree in the abstract about diversity, but might not act that way in a concrete decision-making process. Um, we found that getting people to talk is really, really, really valuable. And that for that, board games actually surprisingly good. So when we started this, we were going to make only video games. And then it turns out most people wanted board games. You can play them. But they actually also work well for a company. Like you bring everyone in to a meeting room. You put a board game on a table. People can start to play. And then, or a card game, you know, or other kind of tabletop game. People you know, can start to discuss, oh, this happened to me. This happened to my aunt. You, know, you can start discussing things that way. Um, we also found that, in general, people really do like to f find out about each other. And they also like to share things about themselves. It's just that you know, it's a little scary, and you're worried about being judged. And so by putting them in a game context where they feel comfortable, you can make that um, process a lot easier. <coughs> All right, uh, in terms of the process, uh, we found that game jams are really fantastic as a way to start. Um, come up with lots of different ideas and try a lot of things out. Um, uh, we found that using paper prototypes are really great, too. So even for video games, to not just code something, but to do stuff on paper and try to make a board game that would act like the final video game is a great process because it's really quick. And you can change the rules. You can change the rules like 10 times in an hour. And you don't have to uh, 
you know, which you could never do with, uh, with well, maybe if you're an incredible coder, you could. Um, on the flip side, that's hard for other people to accept. Sometimes if you have a paper prototype, people don't take you seriously. So that's, you know, it's a little harder that way. <coughs> okay. Um, and having a diverse team obviously also makes a big difference. This seems very obvious, but actually when we were starting the project, we were mostly guys. Uh, and none of us were from India. So uh, we were, you know, we thought, oh, it's so cool. We're going to work with the Indian partner. It won't be a problem. They'll teach us stuff. But there's stuff that's hard to, hard to learn all on your own. Um, and so as we started hiring more people who were Indian, who were women, it made things a lot easier. Um, so in conclusion, uh, diversity and inclusion are good things for organizations. Um, and that over time, our, our, our bias has moved from something that we, you know, it's just out there some overt thing into some implicit thing that's within ourselves that is harder to address for that reason because people don't think that they're biased. We all, none of us think that we're biased. We all think that we're very rational. Um, games have been shown to, uh, to help people tackle difficult subjects. Um, and we found that icebreaker and tabletop games are really great for getting people to start to discuss. Um, and finally, with prototyping, is a great way to start um, any process like that. So to get back to the original question about can games really improve diversity and inclusion in the workplace? My answer is uh, you have to wait, and hopefully I'll tell you next year. OK, thank you very much. And I think we have time for questions, so that's good. I rushed a little bit because I, I don't know. Eight minutes. Oh, that's, oh, I had plenty of time. OK, any, any questions? Yeah? I was really interested in the game you mentioned about uh, having to hide your bias to eat. Oh, okay. So how, how does it actually work? Okay, so the way it works is that um, you pretend that you're you pretend that you're all uh, management at a company and that you have to hire somebody for a position. Okay, and then so it's a random random. Right now it's cards, and then we're going to move it to a mobile game. But right now it, it's the cards, and so you see the people with a with a fake CV. Um, and then everyone has a secret bias card. So for example, mine maybe is like, you know, I don't want to hire a woman. Maybe someone else is, I don't want to hire, I don't know, Muslims or something like that. And then what you do is you argue about who you should hire. And you don't want to hire the person that your bias is about. But, um, but if it's really obvious and I'm like, yeah, you know, I don't know. She's going to go on parental leave at some point. Well, then they'll know that that's my bias. And so they can call me out, et cetera. And you try to like get the... Um, so you're trying to fight for it, but without really letting it in. It's really interesting idea. It's kind of cool. Well, the discussions that come out are really funny. <laughs> it's really, yes? I'm curious about the recruitment process. Who were the people coming? How did they come there? Why? Mm -hmm. And how many? Uh, for the game jams or in for India? Or in jam oh, yeah. So, okay, so it's very two very different things. So let me just go back to this slide real quick um, <coughs> that we're talking about. Oh, sorry, I'm supposed to repeat the questions, and I forgot myself. So the question was uh, about the recruitment process for the different events. So um, when we were in India, we, um, we basically did like board game making events with uh, the different groups that ZMQ, who is our Indian partner, is in touch with. So there's companies, there's uh, nonprofit organizations, and there's, um, and there's also government parts of the government. So these are basically contacts of theirs that were interested in promoting diversity in their workplace. Um, and in Paris, what we've done is more kind of use our gamete community of people who are interested in making games, maybe don't know so much about diversity, although that's not totally true. There are people who really do. Um, and kind of get them to say, OK, let's make games for over the weekend. And you know, and how, many, what, uh, how many people were in work? Uh, OK, well, for the game, oh, shoot, how many? I think for the Paris one, it's around it was like around 50 people or something like that. I would say 40 to 50. Yeah, yeah. And then, but for in in India, we've done smaller things. We've done it also at school with a bunch of students. And, yeah. Any other questions? Yes. Uh, how do you measure the impact of the? Game? That's a, okay. So the question is, how do you measure the impact? So. That's really hard. It's really hard because there's a few different things. You could, you could try to measure the impact of the game in terms of what people learned. Um, and that is difficult in itself. You have to have a lot of uh, very specialized standard questionnaires. Um, and the other attempt is to try to see what the organizations actually do in real life. So that's what ZMQ is planning on doing. So there basically is the idea to see if the management makes any changes in their procedures. So. Because um, I, I didn't talk about that, but there's a lot of things that organizations can do to try to promote diversity in the workplace. It's not just like 
you know, talk about how good diversity it is. There's like very concrete things, you know, like that you can do. So you can make the hiring process more open. You can make people have to write down everything they want about uh, a candidate before looking at the CVs. Uh, and that way you can argue it. Um, actually, if you're interested in that, there's a really fantastic talk um, by an HR researcher at Google called, um, called something bias, uh, diversity, diversity at Google or something like that. Um, and it's really fantastic. And he goes through all these different hiring practices that they've done at Google to make it better. Um, so for example, on the, uh, on the interview thing, they basically are trying to get rid of uh, a typical interview where you would just kind of talk to the person and ask them questions. And they've replaced it with like a script. So like, you know, this is the first question. And then the answers are this, this, or this. You know, and these ones are good and these ones are bad. Now, next question, you know, and the answers are this, this, and this. Which is, it's kind of strange because it feels very robotic. You know, it's like, well, we're replacing people with, you know, an algorithm. But at the same time, it does get rid of the bias, right? Because it's, it's something is standardized and you, it's not about that. Yes, maybe I'll go to him first since you've already asked a question, if that's okay. Yeah. Maybe the questions and answers are biased because they're written by people. And ah, yes, that is possible. <laughs> that is possible. Sorry, you had, you had another question. Mm -hmm. OK, sorry. I would love to not describe a game, a, a particular game, because I want to know what's the part of, uh, uh, of cooperation and competition in your game, because competition, I think, is over in our society. It means us to collective description, as an example mm. of a competitive game. By excellence, it's monopoly, mm. and there are now more and more cooperation games made That's by true. NGO, by NGO, and so some some peace mo movement and so on. What, what's uh, your, your all right? So okay, yeah. So so the question was about competitive versus uh, cooperative games. Yes. So in this. Okay, so just a quick thing about competition and cooperation. Uh, what's cool is that both things can go nicely together. Like, typically in team games, there's a cooperation between the people on the team, and there's a competitive thing between the teams, right? And that's an element where you can mix it. I, I wouldn't agree that competition is bad, like, by itself, because I feel like there is, there is, it, it is something that motivates us, and as long as it's within a game context where we understand we're in a game, we're competing in the game, and when we get out of the game, we're not competing in the same way. I think, I think it's acceptable. Um, in this particular games, uh, sorry, let me just skip to the ones that I picked. Um, yeah, Hired is competitive. Uh, Pirate Partage, this one is um, non-competitive right now, but when we tried it in India, they kept saying, we want a scoring system. We want to be able to know if we're better than the other ones. So <laughs> we're thinking about making it competitive just to kind of add people. So have people play in a team, but once again, have the teams compete. You know, How many cards did you get through? That kind of thing. Um, this is a visual novel. It's, it's you just play on your own, so it's not competitive. Um, and Pin My State, uh, you could play it competitively if you wanted, but you don't have to. It's more like an icebreaker. So uh, maybe time for one more question. Yeah. Uh, I just wanted to respond to that in another way. To me, uh, diversity is fundamental of life. I mean, if you don't have diversity, you have death, right? It's uh, mm -hmm. just a natural process that applies to quite many social processes. So I'm curious why you promote diversity as a competitive behavior, because you promote it in the workplace mm -hmm. as a competitive asset, whereas on the contrary, I think uh, it's pretty much the competition that Kills diversity. So I find there's a bit of a contrast. Yes, so, so there was an observation about how um, diversity is something that creates, can create co cooperation, if I understand correctly. And why are we trying to promote competitivity, which is as a, why are we trying to promote diversity as something that's competitive, as an advantage? Um, I guess the reason that if you're trying to bring diversity into an existing social structure made of companies that are competing, then it makes sense to sell it to them as a competitive thing. I guess that's the answer. It's more like utilitarian than anything else. Um, if you were in a different social structure where you could be, people would be much more collaborative, then I think it would be, it would be wonderful. <laughs> I don't know. But I think it would be a different society altogether. <laughs> All right, maybe we should stop there. Well, thank you very much.